Hello, hello. Welcome for another episode of the Off the Spotlight. Hey, it's your host with the most, your main man, Darren and Palmer. So excited to be with you for another episode. But I get the honor and the privilege to be able to go behind the scenes with best-selling authors from across the globe. Today we have on today, Chris Ward, who is the founder of Win the Hour, Win the Day, both a platform and Amazon best-selling book that helps entrepreneurs to systematically grow their business and, oh, by the way, enjoy a personal life too. After the loss of her husband, Chris returned full-time to the marketing and branding agency she had founded, four, uh, founded years earlier only to find her business was thriving. She began teaching clients the exact systems and process that had freed her up and helped her during the difficult time and changed their lives and the process. Through sound time management principles that anyone can easily understand and apply, Chris clients now had more time, freedom, recapture the joy and fun they once had when they first started their business. Her book, which has been featured on the award-winning Read to Lead podcast, offers a four-week productivity plan to go from overwhelmed to highly efficient so that you can reclaim your life. Now, I just want to thank you so much, Ms. Ward, for coming on to the show. If there's any gaps that I left out of your bio, please fill in our audience at this time. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you for the warm welcome, Darren. Uh, no, no problem at all. No problem at all. And if you don't mind, I want to get right into it. Could you share with our audience the name of your book and why did you write this particular book? Okay, so it's Win the Hour, Win the Day. It's time management for small businesses. Now, uh, diving right into it, really what I wanted to do was help people, help small business owners do one of two things. And the first being either cut back their hours, maybe they work five, six days a week and they want to work four. Or the second being getting out projects, ambitions, and dreams like writing a book without changing your schedule and putting insane hours and, and sort of costing your personal life, your family life, just because you've got dreams and ambitions. So that's what I wanted to communicate. Uh, and those are the people I wanted to help. And like you mentioned in the intro, uh, for me, uh, that happened when I was pulled away from my business. And when I returned, you know, when, after my husband's passing, my business not only survived, but it thrived. And my clients, it became public. My clients were not aware of my absence. They were not aware of what I was going through with my husband. They had no idea. So they started to gently ask me, like, how did you run on such efficiency? And then I started working with them and really as they say, I sort of got their lives back and helped them execute their dreams all the while taking vacations and attending their kids' soccer games and starting to really have fun with their business again and, and no sacrifice to their life. Because I think your business should support your life, not consume it. I love that that it should it should add value. You shouldn't consume it. And I just want to just thank you for sharing that for those entre entrepreneurs who are out there who are hearing this message and they're thinking to themselves, oh my goodness, this is someone who can save me right now. You don't have to hit the panic button right now. We got my girl Chris Ward on here to be able to share with you and enlighten you on how to take those tangible steps and implement them in your life so you can get a different result. Now, with that being said, Chris, it's one thing to know that you have found some or you got a hunch. There's other individuals out there who have systems that they created, but what made you believe that you could actually write a book when so many had failed at the task? Well, I'll tell you, it was very interesting or ironic to me as I was writing the book, I thought, oh my gosh, I was using my strategies for time management to write a book about time management. So I thought, well, there's a test right there on itself. So the first thing that I did, and one of the strategies we talk about in Win the Hour, Win the Day, is I started to work backwards. And we all do this to some element in our personal life, but yet we don't transfer in our business. So working backwards, let me give you an example. Let's say Thursday morning, you had a dental appointment at 9 a.m. So you might say, okay, it's an hour away. I gotta leave at eight. Okay, it takes me about an hour to get ready. You know, good looking guy like yourself, maybe only a half hour, I don't know. So you decide you have to leave at seven or 7.30 to get there for nine, right? So what I did was I set up my, when do I want my book to come out? And I worked backwards. So for me, that meant that I had to produce five pages a day, Monday to Friday. Now that gives you real clarity. And so 
what would happen some days I would think I don't have that in me. I don't have five pages in me today, but then I would realize if I don't have five pages in me today, I don't have 10 pages in me tomorrow. Right? So really having a strategy in place to execute projects, whatever those projects are, whether they're a book or any smaller, bigger, projects that you want to leverage your time, serve your audience, make more revenue, have different revenue streams. You need to have, you know, a strategy in place. And many times people think that they have a plan in place, but they have goals. So I guess I had the secret weapon of the strategies of effective time management as my blueprint while I wrote this book about time management. So that really did help. It came full circle. Mm. I love that because you got to have the steps. And like you brought up earlier, it's a distinction between uh, having the steps that you need and, and just having something that's on a vision board or having goals. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you can manifest those ideas and make it something that you can actually see, oh, wow, I'm able to take a trip without being scared to death when I come back that my business is going to be falling apart. And, you know, knowing that and knowing that you did those things like that as far as getting it lined out, um, Share with us what has been some of the, the feedback or what has been the experience from individuals who have used the process or the tips that you have shared with them in time management and how to, you know, to, to use those in their businesses. Could you share some of that, what it meant to you knowing that, wow, I am a published author and also from the experience from those who've used your steps and implemented them in their own lives, how their lives have changed. Could you share us some of those um, experiences with our audience? Yeah, absolutely. The clients I work with, as I said, often what they want to have is they want to have their dreams fulfilled. And I don't think you should sacrifice your life for that. So the clients I work with, you know, I've been an entrepreneur can also be very isolating. So I started working with actually another podcaster last week. And, you know, on sometimes success can be even further isolating. So on paper, he looked really good. He's got a lot happening. He's got a platform. But like most of the clients I work with, when I get in a bit deeper, the cost he's paying, the hours he's putting in, the sacrifice he's making to his health, to his family, to everything, to get these things you know, thriving is just too much of a price. So what happens is I start working with people like that so that they can have relief and I feel you should start work refreshed and leave work fresh. Like you shouldn't be grinding it out and beating yourself silly to the end of the day till you're dizzy with work. So that's one, you know, that's really some of the results that we get. And they're often very simple techniques that we've just never been taught. So it's really reorganizing your uh, resources versus some heavy strategy that you put into your calendar. So one thing that's quite simple, you know, may I ask you, what does your morning look like? What, how do you start your day? Well, I start my day. Typically I get up in the morning. Um, I start out with some meditation, prayer. I go to the gym. Uh, typically my morning starts off at four in the morning. Meditation, I'm at the gym by 4.30 get out the gym by 5.36, shower up, get some coffee, and then I'm at the office around 7 a.m. And when you hit the office, what's one of the first things you do? I do, basically, I make sure everything is prepped for our, our staff. And I do, uh, on the board, we have um, a gratitude list that we do every morning. So I do a, a three gratitude, three things that I'm grateful for. And also put the objectives, what the responsibilities will be for our daily huddle that we will have that would typically be around 830 because the team members arrive around eight. So we'll have a daily huddle, which will be just a business meeting, a morning meeting around 830. Now, there's a couple really interesting things in there. And the first thing is when I talk about time management, people do often think that they have to be as ambitious as yourself and start getting up at four and five at 6 a.m. And that's really the exact opposite of what I'm talking about. I'm really talking about fitting a calendar that goes with your rhythm. So if your rhythm with your lifestyle is getting up at four, more power to you. But for most people, that's not the case. Now, what I would suggest, which was interesting to me, I'm really proud of you because you didn't mention emails. Most people start their day with emails, trying to put out fires, trying to be, you know, reactionary. Okay, I got to scan everything, make sure it's okay. And what really the biggest thing you can do is start your day with the creative work. 
you have a full charged battery first thing in the morning. You don't have any issues with decision fatigue or attention residue. So the most creative work should come first thing in the morning. And that's what my clients find so amazing is what we've done is we just really reorganize their inventory and change their assets. And so they are surprised that just by you know, instead of juggling a workload, we're executing productivity. They can't believe that that reorganization can give them so many bigger results. So what I would tell the people, especially someone's writing a book, then that first hour is where you're freshest and the emails and the team meetings and all that stuff that you know, cause you're thinking about it all the time that you can do that on half a battery later in the day right? You could even have a team huddle in the evening for the next morning so that you all dive into action in the morning. So that's the biggest thing is we all dive into what we think is the responsible work first thing in the morning. But I would tell you doing the creative work would be your most productive tool if you could start there. I love that. I love those tips. And actually the getting up in the morning, I'm more of an early bird anyway, so it works with me. Um, but my benefit is that is that I get an opportunity where, like you brought up, you, you extracted out of that story that I shared some great tips. I make sure that I do that so I'm not having to focus on my wife, not having to focus on my kids, not having to focus on team members. That I get up early so I can pour into me. So I'm listening, I'm, you know, I'm meditating, I'm praying. I need the physical activity to get me into my rhythm. Also, while I'm doing it, I'm listening to podcasts. I'm listening to faith messages, just building me up, encouraging me, informational things. So by the time I go to the office, I have taken care of Darren first. Um, yeah, and I, I think that first. is amazing. My apologies for jumping on your words, but what I call that is being a business athlete. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So you're a business I athlete. Of a book. <laughs> yeah. So you're a business athlete and I support it a hundred percent, but I just want people to understand that sometimes they hear snippets of messages like yourself. You have a podcast. So they look at your, you know, your accomplishments and they think, Oh no, I have to get up even earlier. And I just want them to know that's not the only path, whatever your day looks like, we can reorganize that day. So to, you know, eliminate, uh, wearing your battery down quicker. I mean, another, as we talked about earlier, another mistake people make is diving into their email list. And what I compare that to is sort of like, let's say you hopped in the car and you're going on a road trip and somebody says, Hey, let's drive from New York to California. And one person has no idea how long that takes and they have no directions. So, you know, every time they see a sign, they go, Oh, should we go left? There's queen street, there's a hospital. We'll just follow all these roads. Hopefully we'll get there. Whereas somebody else has a GPS plugged in and they know how many miles, how much gas, when they'll get there, where the gas stations are, everything's like that. Well, the GPS that's, you know, you need a GPS for your day. You need a plan for your day. You need to win the hour to win the day. So you need to break your work down into segments. But when people are living off their email, that's like they have no direction. What they're doing is every road sign they see, they're taking a left and a right and a left. And so they're not navigating their path. They're being reactionary to any hopeful sign that they see. So, you know, that's where we comes down to win the hour is if you can win the hour, you can't improve what you don't measure. So you just have a successful hour and then when you can build on top of that and if things show up, then you can reprioritize what is the goal for today. So it's really about being, you know, strategic versus another time management heavy system. And I, I'm glad that you made that distinction. You know, don't do it because Darren's doing it. Like me, I had to find my own rhythm. I know others who yeah. they find their stride at, you know, late night around 12 o'clock at night or whenever it might be. Um, so you have to make sure that you find your thing. And one thing that I think that I'm going to implement is that daily huddle at the end of the day um, of being prepared so I can focus on other things in the morning and they already know what they're supposed to do in the first place because we already covered that. And yeah. so people can dive in into their creative areas and times to do what they need to do. So I'm totally in agreement with that. I'm learning from the coach, Miss Chris Ward, myself right now. Thank you for that, young lady. You have to just build me for that later on then, I guess. And, you know, speaking of this, what, what would you share for that person who might be thinking to themselves, it makes sense for Chris. She's all, you know, she's beautiful. She's brilliant. She's, you know, 
helping other entrepreneurs. She's a business owner herself. What would you share to that person who said, I want to share my story, but you know, I'm not Warren Buffett, you know, I'm, I'm not Michelle Obama, I'm not Chris Ward. I can see why they put their story out, but they want to share their story with the world, but they don't feel like they have more degrees than a thermometer. They don't feel like that they have all the certifications. What would you share with them? Why it's important for them to still share their story with the world? Well, you know what? That I think I think everybody has a talent and a gift. And if you have an ambition to write a book, then I believe that ambition is in you for a reason and get it out or your soul is just going to sort of get squished. I think if it's in your heart, if it's in your if you if you can see it, then I believe you must do it. That's what I think. And I, I think then the second part to that is the story. Now, if you read the book, When the Hour, When the Day, it's about you know, inspiring people that they have way more resources than they realize. And you can put simple strategies in place so that you can be way more effective and fulfill your dreams. My story is not in there. And I'm going to be really honest with you. I had a really hard time bringing this up and talking about it. And it took considerable amount of coaching from people around me to mention this because what they kept saying is, Chris, if you don't tell what happened, you'll just be another productivity person. People need to know you know, when, when John was diagnosed with colon cancer, just the doctor's appointments and the surgeries and the chemo, that was more than a full-time job. Never mind the family responsibilities that he was key in. Like I was really supported because of my business. He did most of the heavy lifting at home. And then there's my business. So it was really like being in a canoe and I lost a paddler and they turned the boat around and now we're going upstream. But I didn't want to talk about that, not because of the grief, I didn't want that to define me or to define him. I didn't want that to be known to be what I was known for. I wanted to be about business, Chris, and productivity and things I did. But they just said, look, they're not going to remember the story if you and if you guard that story. So, you know, so really my story is not in there, but it's an important part of it as I present it. But what I would tell you is I think everybody's got an interesting story in them. And if you have a passion to share it, then get it out and you'll find your people and uh, they'll connect with you. And it's a really wonderful opportunity to connect with more people and to work with more people because you are out there more because you have that book. Mm, I love that. And you will find your tribe. So, you know, yes. make sure you understand that it's somebody for you. You know, you, you, if you, you're into quilting, you, you'll be shocked how many people online and with face groups, Facebook groups and other things that have quilting groups out there. I've seen it myself. So don't, if you're a dog lover, if you have a certain type of dog that you like, it's somebody for everybody out there. So don't minimize what you are into or what you like um, because it's an amazing thing right now. And so I just want to, Chris, share with us too, how can they connect with you? How can they buy the book? How can they benefit from your services? Just whatever you have, please share right now because I want people to go uh, deeper and do a deep dive with you and your company and, and um, you know, purchase your materials so they can grow and they can have a better life as well. Yeah, thanks so much for that. So what I would say is I would love you to connect with me on Instagram. It's the Chris Ward on Instagram. I would love to hear what resonated with you today with this interview. So let me know you heard us here and, and what what your takeaway was. Uh, and on top of that, then you could also visit us at when the hour, when the day.com where we do give away the book for free. If you just help us out with shipping uh, a little bit. And on top of that, there's some giveaways there. So those are two paths, but we would love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear what people are working on right now. I mean, tell me what's holding you back and we're here to help. Hey, I don't know about you all, but I think it's worth investing in yourself to at least pay for the shipping and handling to be able to learn from someone who's done it themselves. I know so many entrepreneurs. I know actually I'm going today, as soon as I get off the road from traveling, I'm going to go purchase the book myself so I can have it because I have a mastermind and other things like that. And I'm going to see if we can get some copies for everybody in the mastermind so they can benefit because this is, these are the things right here. You got an individual just like Chris Ward, who's already went through the pain, went through the struggle, put it together for you. Why acquiesce to what you think is right compared to learning from somebody who knows that it's right. It's a proven method. It's a strategy that works. As my grandmother would tell you from the South, the proof is in the pudding. So if you just follow those steps, you get you where you need to go. Don't try to do it all by yourself. Copy genius. 
And so I think I think I'm grateful that we have the genius on today, Chris Ward. I really want to thank you again, Chris, for coming on and pouring your wisdom. And I want to connect with you. I know we're doing the show right now, but I'm going to reach out to you as well, even off air, um, because there's some things that I want us just to have like a strategy session or whatnot. Yeah. I just want to connect with you on some stuff and see how we can come together for some events and some other things that we have going on as well. So I just want to give y'all a little, a little taste, a, a little experience of Miss Chris Ward, and we're going to come back um, with something that's going to blow your socks off, blow your mind with, with having Chris Ward on. So thank you again for being a guest on the Author Spotlight today. I really appreciate you. Well, thank you for having me. And yes, you know what? A number of companies have, have reported to me that they use my book as a manual for training. So uh, it might be a worthy purchase there for you. And uh, thank you very much for having me on your show and your enthusiasm. I, I, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And for those of you who are tuned in today, I want you to understand that you all are the real MVPs. Remember that if you won't change, be the change. Until next time, remember that this is the year for your new book. Thank you again, Chris. You have a great one. Thanks.